let's take this form that we just built and let's, so we have a template driven form. For interest sake, I want to show you the differences between a template driven form and a reactive form. So in a lot of the documentation you're going to see on Angular, they're going to push you toward using reactive forms. And I think reactive forms are probably the future of, um, you know, if you're going to get into forms, that's probably where they're going. And it's worth knowing about both ways of doing this. So I thought it would be interesting just to show you. And there's not a lot that we have to do to change this. So what I've done is I've created a new, um, I've created a new, a new component. So we have a template driven form and I now have a reactive, uh, bridge form reactive version. So what I'm going to do is step one, just like we did for working with our, um, here we pulled in the forms module. What you want to do for working with reactive forms is you would pull in the reactive forms module. So I'm going to do both kinds of forms in my in my application. You probably wouldn't do that, or you could, but I have both of these modules that are going to be imported into um, into my work in my workspace. So I have access to them. I'm going to add another route. So here, what I want to do is I want to import my bridge form reactive component from the new uh, the new component that I created and let's just make a, another route path is new reactive component is the um, bridge form reactive component. Okay, so let's let's start out with um, let's start out with well, let's start with the component itself. I want to if if we take a look for us just for a second, when we built this React, this is our template driven form. And in this template driven form, we said that the source of truth is here in the template. So what's happening is Angular is going to take care of doing two-way data binding with a component or a control in your form, so an input element, let's say, and it's going to bind it into some member property that you have on your component here, so the ID or the name or whatever. But essentially, the, the bulk of the work, what's happening is happening inside of the template with a template driven form. Okay, the name, the name implies it, the name says this is what's going on. So with a reactive form, what we're gonna do is instead of putting the bulk of the work or the, um, the source of truth is not gonna be in the template, it's gonna be in our component. So we're gonna define a bunch of pieces inside of our component in order to make this work. So let me walk you through how we're gonna do this. So with our reactive component, I'm going to import a number of things. I'm going to import a form control. I'm going to import a form group and validators from the Angular forms. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to define controls, form controls here in my component. So I'm going to put the machinery for the model inside of my TypeScript file rather than in my template. So step one, I'm going to create a group to hold all of my all of my form elements. So like, you know that in our form, we have all of these different input controls and I'm going to group them all together within my form. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that my class has something called a bridge form and it is a form group. It's a group of it's a group of uh, form controls that we're going to define. 
And each one of these form controls has a name. So for example, the ID, ID is gonna be equal to a new form control. The initial value is going to be the empty string. And I'm gonna define that this field is required. So I'm gonna use a function, a validation function that says this, and these are already pre-built for me. There are a whole bunch of different validators that I could put on here. You know, if it has a certain length that it has to have, max length, min length, has a pattern that it has to have, whatever. And the one that I want right now is that it's required. So what you're seeing here, let's do another one. I'm gonna have the name. Name is gonna be a new form control. Empty string is the initial value and it's going to be required. And again, don't ever copy and paste your code because it leads to bugs. Hopefully I can do it without. So we have latitude, we have longitude, we have the year. And the year is interesting because not only is this thing required, but we also want to have a validator for the pattern. And the pattern, as you'll recall, is a string, uh, a, re a regex that says we can have any amount of white space at the beginning or none. We can have a something, a, a digit, zero to nine, and we want four of those, and then there's optionally um, white space at the end. So this thing has two validators that we're gonna define for it. And we have a length, let me just paste again here, a length, and the length is not required. And the width, is not required. So if you think about what we've done here, we've basically moved, we've moved things out of the template and we've defined them using um, classes inside of our TypeScript code. So it's no longer extra syntax that you're, or directives that you're putting on to the elements so much as um, the source of truth, like where this data is going to get managed, is going to happen here inside of our TypeScript component. Okay, so let's do what we did in the previous case too. Let's write an on submit event handler. And our, this time, instead of passing the form in, like this, like that's what we did last time. We passed the form into this call from the DOM, like from the template. We don't need to do that here because we actually have the form's data model here as a member. So we could say, basically the form is this. We have access to the form like so. And if I wanted to console log that this was submitted and we could print things out. Like we could print out the form's value just like we did last time. So let's say value is form.value. We could print out if um, the form is dirty, uh, form.dirty. We could print out if it's uh, valid, whether it's valid, stuff like that. Um, so all of these different properties. So the form has um, all different things that we can we can extract from it when we want to submit it. But what's different is that we're not having to pass it in as a, like we're not having to pass the reference to the DOM element into, um, from our template side into our code. We just, we have it. We have it, it lives on the, we have this form group that has all of these different form controls that are inside. Okay, so that's how it looks on this end. So what we need to do now is we need to, we need to make some modifications to the way that our, our template looks. So let me save this. Okay, so let's just copy our, let's copy this whole thing over to our reactive component. And then let's 
do some surgery on this to make it work. So let's call this bridge form reactive. And the first thing that we can do is we can get rid of this reference variable. We don't need the reference variables anymore. So I'm going to get rid of the reference variables. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect I'm going to connect the form group that lives inside of our component, the bridge form form group. I'm going to connect it here. And I'm going to get rid of this variable here. So that's the change that I have to make on the on the template side so that my form is my form, I'm going to bind this into the form group that I've defined in here, the, the bridge form. And then all of these components, I'm going to be able to refer to them by name because they're part of the form group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify for each one of them what name I should use. So down here, you'll recall that what we had to do to make this work is we had to do two-way data binding between the input element and we had to specify a backing data model member that we wanted to hold the actual value when this got changed uh, either by the user or got changed from underneath if there was input on either side. So we did this ng model uh, two-way data binding uh, to make that work. So this I don't need. I don't need a reference anymore. So here, bridge ID, ng model, I don't need to do that anymore, but I do need to do something. I need to say that the form control name that is, that is going to be used for this input element is equal to ID. So what that means is I'm specifying that I have a form group that's attached to the whole form, and that's bridge form. Within the form group, I want to use a form control with the name ID. So that's how it's gonna that's how it's gonna do the connection. It's gonna it's gonna work backwards out, not from the template, but from the component. So I basically need to do this change all the way down. So I'm gonna get rid of this. In every case, specify the form control name. Uh, okay, good. Now, I can also, so I'll save that. Let me switch over to my other form here. So I'm going to change the reactive form. Here's my reactive form. It's already working, which is nice. Uh, I've got an error here. Can't read property invalid of undefined, so I need to deal with that. Come back to that. Um, let's do one more thing. So in our TypeScript here, we're specifying the validators on our form control. So this is required, required, required. This is required. It has a pattern, etc. So if I want, I can, I could strip that off of these in the template. They're not really necessary because it's going to get managed. I don't need this pattern. I don't need required. So my template can be simpler as a result. And yep. Okay, that's good. I just paused there for a second so I could debug the error I was having. So now all of our form control names have been entered and this is all working. So if I, exactly as I had before, if I start down through this, um, give it a name, uh, this is fine, you know, ID is fine, name is fine, latitude, longitude, my year, 
I, I have to have four digits. As soon as I get four digits, 2020, if I have spaces, etc. 2020 is good. Um, and I can submit this and I get my values back again too. So you can see that very similar to what we had with the template version, I can see that my form is valid. I can see that I have all of the values that have been entered here, any of the ones that have been have been given. So, you know, at this point I could submit this to a server or further work with it to do whatever I needed to do with it. So I haven't had to make tons and tons of changes for this to work. It was a matter of bringing in the reactive forms module and working with form controls and form groups inside of my component, as opposed to having those implicitly get created by Angular when it sets up the directives in the template version and specifying any validators that I want. We could also do custom validators, which I'm not gonna get into right now. This there's a lot, you know, you could take this a lot further, but I've got a, a number of validators here. Some of them don't have any validators and I'm connecting everything up by specifying the form group that I'm using and then which control, the name of each control within that form group that goes, you know, this particular input I want to be connected into that form control in my component. So slightly different orientation for how the data goes. I think the template ends up being a lot simpler. To me, the more you can do in in your component, in TypeScript, et cetera. I don't know, I find that a lot clearer rather than having all kinds of syntax inside the template, which, you know, these directives can get a little bit hairy trying to remember them all. I modified things down here slightly. So my errors, the only real difference that I had to make was that I'm reaching into the bridge forms set of controls because the bridge form is a, is a form group and so it has all these controls and I'm getting them by name and then checking to see if they're valid or checking to see what the error is to be able to show those to show those error messages. Okay, so I'll pause there and I wanna do one more iteration on this form and I wanna show you how you could use pre-built components. I'm gonna look at working with the material, um, the form fields that are available in the material components. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll play with some pre-made ones instead of having to do them all ourselves.